Welcome back to the Matt Graham Podcast. Today we have on today a guy who I found through one of my Instagram live streams that has accomplished something that is pretty spectacular. So I wanted to come on here uh, with him today and discuss that uh, accomplishment, his journey, what he learned, um, and what he, he can teach everyone here about um, his journey in losing 230 plus pounds over the last 16 months, which is a crazy achievement. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody losing that much weight that quickly. So I'm very interested to hear um, the whole story. Um, Greg, what would do you prefer to be called Greg or Moose? What works? Greg is fine, but Moose works too. You know, I've, I've, Moose has been stuck with me since middle school. So I, I, it's like a second name to me. All right, cool. How did you get the name Moose? Uh, people didn't know how to re- pronounce my last name, which is Musinski. And it's, uh, so they just call me Moose instead of Musinski. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's easy enough. All right. Um, well, I'm, we're going to dive right into it. Um, I'm curious, how did you get yourself in a position where you weighed, what, 400 and how many pounds? 55. So 455 pounds. How do I get my position to get to get that? Yeah. So how did you get yourself in a position? What's the backstory? How did you end up 455 pounds? Man, I tell you, I mean, my upbringing, first of all, it might maybe we should start there because how I was raised, I was raised as um, plus I was raised in northern Illinois uh, suburbs, just west of Chicago and I never learned about nutrition or learned about anything that would help me with my health at all, period. And so as I got through life, I would, I just didn't care really. I mean, there were times where during high school I would, uh, you know, sneak in McDonald's before dinner. Uh, you know, I would do things that would, um, inhibit myself from, achieving my goals, unfortunately. Uh, Did you have goals at the time? Yeah, I wanted to play a lot of sports. Um, Football, I wanted to play a lot of, I was was in the wrestling team. Um, And unfortunately, I I had that mindset back then. I never saw anything through. I always always started something and never saw through it. Um, That's even through middle school to high school and everything. And I was a big kid. I think I weighed, in middle school, I think I weighed... 167. And how tall are you uh, seven, at the time? Uh, five, ele- five, oh, well, at the time, I'm sure I was like five, nine, five, eight. I'm guessing. I don't know. Maybe five, ten. Um, and yeah, so I think I gained one. I was 167 on the wrestling team freshman year. Um, and in high school, I just blew up. I got a job at a sandwich shop and I was feeding myself at work and then going home and eating. And I was doubling up on meals and I kept on gaining weight. I wasn't being active. I was hanging out with friends. Uh, My friends were great, but we just, we didn't do anything very active. We were mostly staying inside playing video games. I was a big gamer, um, build computers and all that. So, and so we would just sit down all day and I just accumulated weight over and over. Um, and about, about me not accomplishing any, anything going following through, that was a problem. Uh, and it, it followed me all the way through until I was 35. I'm 37 now. And I had a problem where I was not succeeding through anything I would start. Um, and, or not finish anything at all. How, and how so, were you, how were you as a student? Like, did, did this sort of mentality affect your, your, uh, academic career? Yeah, so the mentality I had was just playing video games until I was tired. So I would play video games until 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. I wouldn't study. I had a horrible work ethic uh, for school. Up the SAT and the ACT, I just filled in the bubbles. I didn't even read. I didn't even, I didn't even try to succeed even in the ACT or SAT. I, it was that bad. Uh, I was so, also in, I was also in special ed too. So it also added to that as too. So, yeah. 
Interesting. Okay. So was there any thought to yourself as you were growing up that you were, that you were, I don't think many kids at that age are necessarily thinking much about their health, but that you were overweight to a point where you kind of stuck out. Oh yeah. Um, I got to a point where I was wearing baggier clothes and, um, I should put point this out as well. Uh, I also have a condition. I should have looked it up on my phone before I got on this podcast, how to pronounce it, but it's man boobs. And there is a condition. Gynocomastia. Yep. I have horrible gynoclastia. I didn't know about it until I was in my thirties that it was actually a, a disorder or disease or whatever it is. And I didn't know about it until like recently. And because when I'm losing the weight, my, my, uh, my chest was not basically my chest now is so big to the point where if I run, it's so uncomfortable. I have to wear a compression shirt. And I'm thinking as soon, if I start running more and more I'm thinking of wearing a sports bra or something, it's that bad. Uh, so because of that, I had to wear baggier clothes when I was younger and I didn't know what was happening. I, I, I was drinking a lot of milk. I think maybe that's the reason I would use to chug like a, like a half a gallon to a gallon of milk a day. Sometimes um, that's probably the cause of it. Um, well, so for, and, those that, for those that don't know, uh, gynecomastia is basically a condition where um, literal like breast tissue accumulates in your chest uh, as a man, which obviously is not supposed to happen. Um, but what it is, um, I could tell you the cause of it. I don't know if milk has anything to do with it, but what it really is, it's a, it's a, um, it, it, it's the, a symptom of too much estrogen in the body. Um, so that can be, and that can come from a multitude of things. Like it can come from, uh, it can come from diet. It can come from, uh, habits. It can come from genetics. It can come from, uh, the fact that we have a lot of, um, estrogen phytoestrogens in our water supply. So I'm not sure if you're familiar, if you're not, if you're aware of this, but like when, when females that are on birth control, when they urinate like that, a lot of that gets filtered out, but it doesn't always get filtered out. So we have actual estrogen in our water supply. And then there's also the chemicals in our food and there's a million different things that can contribute to it. But a lot more often than not, it is, it is, I would, I would at least imagine environment related. Um, so yeah, it's the, it is the accumulation of breast tissue as a result of too much estrogen in the body. So that's, that's what it is for those that, for those that yeah. don't know. Um, so, so I built up, sorry to cut you off there. I built up a horrible insecurity because of that, uh, when I was younger and it, it accumulated over the years, I still have this insecurity that I'm still dealing with now, uh, with my body, um, and I'm trying to love my body, love myself and, I'm working through that. But when I was back in the day, like, yeah, I wear baggy clothes. I didn't take off my shirt once ever, I, not even for the pool. Um, and I was just, I, don't, I just didn't feel like the other kids did. If that makes yeah. sense. Did you ever experience, did, did you ever experience any bullying or anything like that? Oh yes. Uh, my, my nickname in, in elementary school was Chuggalug train because I used to play a lot of sports, but I was big and I could, I was actually pretty quick as a big guy. And so I was trying to play with the jocks and everything and they would call me Chuggalook train. So yeah, I also got made fun of just being big. They would used to poke me and ask me if I can feel it just by poking me in the skin. They'd be like, can you feel that? I go, yeah, it's skin. I can feel it. Yeah. And then they would just laugh. Um, and also fitting into the desks at school, mostly during high school, I was had a hard time just fitting in the desks. They, they were very small, not, well, first of all, I was just destroying my body. So it was my fault, but yeah, it's it, it, everything about my upbringing, upbringing was just stressful and hard. And maybe that's why I had a hard time even studying or doing school because I just thought that's everything I thought about was my insecurities mostly. Do you feel like the, um, the eating and the lack, the lack of dying, the lack of exercise, do you feel, would you attribute these things to mostly a lack of knowledge about these things? Yes, exactly. I, I was thinking about this. If I was 
uh, I think about about I think about this all the time actually. If I was actually brought up and someone just sat me down and told me or at least explained it to me in a way where just straight English saying, these are what calories are. This is how you burn it. This is what happens in the body. Explaining the chemistry of what happens, you know, of why you need to work out, why you need to expel energy to, and then what happens when you eat the food and the fuel that goes through your body and, and the, and the makeup of everything. I am so mad why school does not teach that. You know, that's your number one thing in life is health. Number one thing, mental health, body, everything. And they don't even teach that in school. They have like home mec. They, you put some eggs together and make a cake or something. And you talk about, maybe you might talk about calories very little, but there is nothing in school that tells you how to take your mental health and put it towards your body. Nothing, nothing at all. And I'm very, very upset about that, especially for my son. I have a seven-year-old son. And that's exactly what I'm doing now to him. I am teaching him the and guiding him through it. And he's seeing my transition. This is so big as a seven-year-old. This transition for me losing 230 pounds, he is asking me questions that I wouldn't even thought of at his age back then. I I am so happy that I'm doing this now for and it's for him and, and also for me, but also for him. And I'm so happy that he is seeing my my progress. No, that's massive. And, and, you know, a lot of people, they will say things like, oh, it's my genetics. I'm overweight because of my genetics. And I don't believe that's true. I believe it is habits that are learned from your parents, from your grandparents. Right. Like these things are taught. Um, I just saw a video the other day. You might have seen it on my story of it was uh, New York City in like the 19, early 1900s. And everyone walking around was thin as a rail. And it's like, well, where were all the genetically obese people then? And it's not, it's, it's, it's a lot of things, but, but when you have a, when you have a family of people that are overweight, that is, it's not, it's not a genetic predisposition. It's, it's habits that are taught and you having made this transition, you are breaking that cycle. I don't know if your how, if your parents are overweight or anything like that, but that is that is a vicious cycle that I see repeat in so many families where the parents are overweight, then the kids are overweight, then the kids' kids are overweight. And it takes someone like you to make the transition that you made to change the trajectory because that, you know, it's not just how you look and how you feel. Like that changes the entire trajectory of someone's life. You know, like you making the decision you made changes the entire trajectory of your entire bloodline moving forward. Right, because it's not going to be just your son. It's going to be your son's kids and 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 the people that are influenced by your son and whoever comes after your son. So that decision has a bat butterfly effect that is so beyond just you losing 230 pounds, which is massive alone. But I think the butterfly effect of that is going to is going to be like be a greater impact, far greater, far greater. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially when you and, consider what yeah. the alternative would have been if you didn't make the transition right. or if you didn't make the transformation, if he learned all the same habits that you had leading up to the transformation, you know, if that cycle just kept going, you know, how that would, how that would impact his lives, his life and the people around him. So. Right. My, my dad too, he uh, went through a weight loss as well. Uh, I should point that out because he, he actually showed me that. Well, I didn't, unfortunately, my parents divorced when I was in high school. And so I didn't see my dad that much, but, and I wasn't there for his weight loss, really. I did see him here and there. And so I saw him like, say like every six months, I would see him get skinnier and then skinnier. And then he went and got surgery for skin removal. Uh, and so that, that showed me and taught me that it can be done because I, I'm not too sure his starting weight, I think it was probably around 400 pounds. He got down to, I think, 280, 260, right around there, which is still really good. Yeah, I mean, that's anything above like 70 pounds is amazing. Yeah, which is massive. And uh, and so he was the one. He never really talked about it, to be honest with you. He never talked to, to me about the specifics, maybe because I never asked him. Mm -hmm. 
but I wish I did. But looking back on it now, uh, everything that I've did, I've, I've learned on my own. Uh, maybe we can go talk about that later, but yep. I, the environment that I was brought up in, yes, it was not something that was ideal because obviously I was getting bigger every year. My mom now, when I talk to my son, my mom now still tells me, Hey Greg, you should uh, kind of relax on teaching him these things because she thinks it's going to create some kind of disorder, which I don't, which I think is something that is completely wrong. Now I, I, I don't grind my kid, uh, my son on that at all. I kind of give him the opportunity to ask me questions and then I go forth from there and, and it's very gentle about it. And so, she, but she has this way of saying that I'm, you know, I think this is a lot of, this, a lot of families have this saying, like you just kind of ignore it and don't say anything about it. And then all of a sudden, once it gets to a point where you need to fix it, then you should start worrying about it but you should start worrying about it way before that or, and even teach yourself certain things. And I just didn't have that. Yeah, no. And I mean, I, I understand the concern, but the, but the problem so often is that people only express, and I'm not trying to make a judgment about your mother, right? I'm just making a general observation about people. Yeah. She's great, by the way, she's great. So I'm not saying that she uh, brought me up a bad way. She's fantastic. She's so loving uh, she's so loving to the point where, you know, she'll she'll hide me from that stuff, which which underlining might not be the best thing. But, you know, she had great intentions, though. Yeah. And what I was saying is um, people tend to express their concern. They only foresee like the the negative outcome of a positive thing instead of the negative outcome of a negative thing. So what you see so often is people like. For example, like if you weren't teaching your son any of these things and he was having the same lifestyle you had, you know, leading up to this, would 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 they be just as concerned about, you know, where where they're headed? You know, it's like if he if he is a if if he's a little bit not neurotic, but just like, I don't know, almost like too mindful about what goes in his body. It's like that's it's a good problem to have. It's far better than the alternative, you know. Where he doesn't right. even consider yep. it. When you when you graduated high school, where were you yep. at weight wise? Man, I blew up. Uh, that's where I gained a lot of weight. When I was working at a sandwich shop, like I said before, I was eating double meals. I think I was. It's got to be around three hundred or three hundred and twenty. Okay, right around there. All right. Yeah. Now, how old are you? I am thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Okay, so walk me through. 18 to 35 or whatever you started the, the journey. So right after high school, that's when I got into a lot of drugs and, uh, I didn't do anything hard. It's mostly just, uh, smoking the marijuana and, uh, me and my friends, we just played video games and I just got bigger and I was, I was working at the same sandwich shop. Uh, I was going to college and, uh, I ended up quitting college because that's what I do. I quit things. That was just my, that was just me. I quit things. I quit that because I thought I can move up into the sandwich shop business, which I did. I moved up to assistant manager by the time I was 24, but that's besides the case. I, back in 20, when I was 20 years old, I met my ex-wife. That's where everything's changed right there. I just went from one course when I, when I met my ex-wife to well, bam, went to another course. And I, I just went off in directory of, uh, of just exploring a relationship. It was my first time since I was big and getting made fun of, right? It was my first time dealing with a relationship with a girl. It was the first kiss when I was 20. First time I had sexual relationships with somebody It was the first time for everything. And two years later, we ended up getting married. And the, at the same time, she, she, uh, she was a bigger woman as well. So I was also big too. So that just kind of fed into everything, you know, so we would just go out to eat a lot and, and not really make any food at home, which we did. I love cooking by the way, which also adds to also later, but I love cooking. So, but we, it's just 
we had a bad habit. And as we went through the marriage, I kept on going through job and job, uh, not job and job, but I got to a job to a point where I was working at the sandwich shop, ended up getting uh, unjustly fired, uh, which really made me angry. Uh, I got to a point where I was assistant manager making like, what was I making? Like $42,000 a year, uh, which is, this is important because later, later on, I could tell you how much I was making then and, and where I'm at now, because uh, it really adds to if you can lose the weight on how much money you're making. And I can tell you that I was not making a lot. Um, but I ended up going from a sandwich shop to a pizza shop and the pizza shop when I was working with, uh, when I was actually with my ex-wife, I would eat so much at the pizza shop as well, go home and I just gained more weight. I think I got up to 370 by, I think when I was 27, I was with her for a while too. I was with her for over 10 years, married for eight years. Um, and the reason why there wasn't really much between that time, but just me trying to be trying to figure out myself and be, be a man, try to, to provide for my family. It sounds like a, like a, like you said, a time of exploration, but, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, just personally, it sounded like you were doing the same thing you were doing in high school, you know, aside from the professional stuff, aside from the relationship, like just playing video games, eating, yeah. hanging out, you know, and that was it. And I want to talk about your, your, the mentality of quitting a lot, because this is something that I see more often than I wish was the case, you know, where people just, as soon as they run into any resistance, they quit, you know, as soon as it starts to get tough, they quit. And so was the weight loss really the first time that you ever really pushed through? 100%. It. It opened my eyes to the world, to what I can do, what I can accomplish. Uh, yes, what, the weight loss was the first time I've wanted to do something in my head and I was able to show myself that I could do it. And uh, during that whole the whole time between 20 or basically my whole life, I always thought I was disgusting. I always thought I was I had no respect for myself. I thought I had, I had no love for myself, nothing whatsoever um, in that aspect. And uh, I, um, and I do want to add something as well. There was a time where, um, cause obviously my ex, I did go to a, I did went through a divorce and that, which was about six years ago. And I, back in 2017, I think it was, and from 2017 or 2016, I was at the end of 2016, but that time from then till 2021 is when I started my weight loss journey. Man, it was the hardest time of my life. I, I failed again as a man and I couldn't, I was just in a dark place. You know, I had, I had a, my son was born in 2015 and I had joint custody with him and I blew up probably to another 420 pounds eating, going out, playing video games on my own, trying to find my path through life, still going from another s s horrible at dead end job of working either food or retail, which had nothing to do with any kind of school. I had no skill. The only skill I have out of all this was, I, which is to this day, is that I can talk to strangers very well. So obviously, if I'm working retail and working uh, with food, I can talk to strangers. I, I still do that to this day. I go to, I go to the uh, shopping center. I can talk to any stranger and have a conversation just like that, And which can be I can work that as a skill at some point. That's but a yeah, very good skill. During, That's a, that, I think that skill is – but not to cut you off, but like that, yeah, before, yeah. I don't, I don't want you to discredit that skill. That, that is a very important skill to have. I think that if you're going to have any success in any realm of life that you need to be able to talk to people, you need to be able to have conversations with strangers, especially because especially in this day and age where people, where the social skills of people are declining at a rapid rate with 
you know, the more that we have people that grow up with social media, the more that we have generations that don't even pick up the phone to make a phone call. They communicate every single, every single method of communication is some form of typing. Um, having a, having the ability to talk to people face to face and start conversations and be, be, uh, an extrovert, um, right. Or at least extroverted, um, that, mm-hmm. that is a skill that is going to have a high, very high demand in the future. And there's going to be a very low supply. So, and it can get you, if you can make it, you know, they, they say in life that like, it's all about who, you know, right. And if you're able to connect with people and, and I mean, look at this conversation now, not saying that I'm like the guy to network with, but like, you know, I'm pro- I, you're on a, you're on a yeah. podcast, you're on a podcast where probably thousands of people are going to watch and, you know, two weeks ago, that wasn't, you know, the case. And it was your, not only your transformation, but your ability to have a conversation that sparked that. And it won't be the last time either. I, I, I am merely a stepping stone onto something better. And, um, I'm happy to be that stepping stone. Um, but you know, I just, I just don't want you to discredit that skill and say that that's not, you know, a skill, but it yeah. totally is. It absolutely is. And, and it's going to become more and more, uh, in demand as time goes on. Yeah, I guess that's the only thing I can take from 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 uh, my work ethic is pretty much that. But um, going back to where my divorce and going into it the dark the dark place again, <laughs> that's that is where I think is important for people to to figure out if you're in that dark place and you're struggling in that dark place. There is an out at some point. I just want to let people know <laughs> because I was, I got to a point where I was, I was thinking about who would be at my funeral. I was in that. So I was in that dark place where I would think about my funeral, who would come, who would see me because I, at that point, I forgot to mention, uh, at that point I started to, uh, get diabetes. I got t- type two diabetes and I also gained, not gained. That's the horrible term for that one. But I also got a, diagnosis of high blood pressure. And I also got uh, sleep apnea, horrible sleep apnea. Speak. My dad and my friend would record me while I'm sleeping to show me how bad it was. Just think about it. I was four, probably at the time when people record me, I was around 435, not even my highest, never my heaviest yet. And they would record me and I would hear myself and I would just be like, I would be in denial. I was that my mindset wasn't there yet, you know, and they would show me, they would show me the video and I would just be, I would be sick at myself. I would still look at, maybe it was a bad thing to look because I still, I just got less respect for myself. You know what I mean? And during that time I thought about, now I didn't think about it a lot, but I've had, I did think about it more than a handful of times of, of possibly killing myself during that dark time. Um, it's not something that, uh, I'm proud of. I didn't really think about how to, I just thought about what would happen if I died. And I thought about it a lot because I knew that I probably would probably fall asleep and not wake up, you know, especially when you have sleep apnea, it's horrible, high blood pressure, diabetes. I was falling apart, man. Uh, it was so bad. Like I, I just gut wrench right now in my heart right now. I was just like, Oh, I could have, I could have died. Especially, and I had COVID. I got COVID in 2020, even before all this. And I was 450, like almost 450 pounds. Luckily, I got like a mild case of it. Didn't have to be hospitalized. But there was a night where I thought something was happening <laughs> during COVID. And I just couldn't breathe at, at one point. And I fought through it that one night. And that was the hardest night one of my life uh, before that too. I also got ammonia because I think that's a precursor to, to getting COVID. You get ammonia. Sometimes I got ammonia and I started coughing up blood. That was like during that time, I, that was a year right before I started my journey. And that might've been one thing that really helped me start it was getting COVID. But if you, if you think, if you think about my whole life right now, it should be all that too. That should right. give me that motivation to start. You know, it's funny because I just had this conversation with um, 
Bishoy Kella, the guy that, you know, lost 163 pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was saying the same thing, not about, you know, getting, uh, getting COVID or whatever, but you know, actually he did get it, but, um, it was really having certain moments where you would think that that should be the thing that wakes you up and says, Hey, we got to change something. But right. actually that not being the thing at all, you know, it's like mm -hmm. the red flags were lining the streets the entire time, all over, all throughout the years. And that wasn't, it. that wasn't enough to wake you up. And, uh, so what was the thing that eventually said, all right, I'm 455 pounds. I got to do something about this. I ended up going to the doctor for the first time in 25 years. Just so you know, of all this, I didn't go to the doctor once until I got diagnosed when I went to the doctor. And that was back in 20, it was in 2020 or 20 or 2019. So through all of all this, I didn't go to the doctor. And once I got to the doctor and I got all these pills, I felt like I start needed a change. So then during 2019 and 2020, I fed myself with, with knowledge. So this knowledge we're talking about where I was lacking in, I gained it in 2019 and 2020. There was times where I would feed myself as well with knowledge of how to eat healthy at certain times during my, my time with my, with my ex-wife because I was trying to become a man, right? And I was trying to, I, I did try, I did try to lose weight during, during that time with my ex-wife. At some one point I went to, I got a gym membership, but with, with her family there, and if she's watching this, I'm so sorry. But with her family, there was no, there was no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Help or there was no, nobody that would, that would give me the encouragement to go. No one was like, they were, they were more like telling me, Hey, uh, why are you eating that protein powder or the superfoods? Like, why are you eating those? Like, if you think they're gross, you should just stop. Yeah, that is a that is a that is a horrible environment to be in because and I know and I and I've been in those environments where where people are they just value different things and they they're so they're so they're so wrapped up in their version of reality and the way things should work their idea of way, way, the way things should work. If it tastes good, you should eat that and not the thing that tastes bad. If it feels bad, you shouldn't do that. If it feels good, you should do that, right? Like that's, that makes logical sense. But anybody who knows and has been through, you know, a journey like yours or like mine, you know, that's not true. And you know that now, but when people are are raised in an environment like that when that's all they know and they see someone straying from the path straying you know leaving the cave so to speak um it's it it, it creates those comments it creates those questions it creates like well what are you doing what are you th what are you what are you what are you trying to do yeah exactly that and they their thought too was all genetics by the way and uh they didn't think I could lose any kind of weight or anything like that because it's genetics, unfortunately. Right. But uh, going back to your original question uh, about what what was the precursor for me to start? Again, it was the combination of all that and the knowledge that I learned within 2019 and 2020 or 2020, yeah, 2020. I started listening to your good grace, uh, Jordan Peterson, behind you. Uh, I listened to him. I also, yep. I also uh, read. Uh, not read, but I, I also, I also don't read, which I know is a problem. Okay. So I listened to his audio book and Jordan Peterson. I, yeah, I listened to Jordan Peter's audio. Yep. I listened to his audio book and I think I have ADHD because when I, even when I try to listen to audio books, my mind wanders and, and all of a sudden like a whole hour went by. I don't even know what, 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 what they said. So it's even hard for me to focus. So, uh, but what I would do, though, I would, I would watch Jordan Peterson, and the one thing he said was that which really stuck with me and still sticks with me today is, what if you sat on this on your end of your bed, and you just said to yourself, you know, what could I change? What can, how can I be better? What do I need to change? What is one thing that if I could do, I would do? That would make my life better. I think that was that's I still butchered it, but that's roughly the the statement.
Exactly. And I literally sat on my bed in 2022 or 2020 and I sat on my bed and just, and just pondered that I would do it for a couple of days, get my thoughts and do it again, get my thoughts, do it again. And basically what I was doing, I was training my brain to think about instead of the darkness that I was in, I was training my brain for the environment of change. If that makes sense. Yeah. You are, you, instead of looking behind, you're looking ahead. Instead of looking down, you're looking up. Yep, exactly. And I was flooding myself with auto, also other motivational speakers and also motivational podcasts I would listen to. Uh, anything I can get my hands on, I would just absorb it through my headphones. And anything I would do, I would always have it playing. And so that also helped me launch it, launch my, my weight, weight loss as well. I think, I think that's a good, a good thing to touch on is like, you know, for anybody, whether you're overweight or you're just like in a bad place, like just the same way that changing your actual diet will have a massive impact on your physical health. Changing your information diet is going to have a massive, massive impact on your overall health. And so that's what you were doing essentially. You know, you were going from yep. really, I, I, I don't know what you were watching or consuming before at the very least video games. And, um, and you were changing that to, you know, people that were talking about a better life, a better path, a better option. And, um, yep. you know, when you, for lack of a better term, brainwash yourself with that. And it's the only thing that you think about. It's really, it's really not hard to, to, it's really hard to not move in a positive direction, you know? Right. So it's the, uh, it's the law of attraction, right? If you, if you think about it and you live it, you'll start seeing it out in the open and you'll start manifesting something. You'll eventually manifest it. You know, if you think about it, you'll manifest it in some kind of way. And luck, luckily I manifest it into a weight loss journey. Thank God. And so what a lot of people talk about manifestation and I'm, I'm always one of those people that says, yeah, but you gotta, you know, a lot of people think that you just like listen to stuff, think about stuff, shout affirmations in the mirror and then expect things to happen. But I've always been one to say like, you need to pair it with action. And so when you were changing your information diet, at what point did you, did you go from, okay, I'm thinking about this stuff to now I have to actually do something about it. So that that moment, I my coworker from work uh, and a friend, he said that he wanted to lose weight. So I was like, okay, that's a good time to start with somebody that can encourage me, and we can go back and forth and motivate each other. Uh, that was in twenty twenty one, December fifteenth. That's my starting date, and that's the day that I literally went in my whole pantry. Well, I say pantry. By the way, this whole time I have zero dollars. I am broke. Okay. And, and the fact that, uh, I am in this journey, I still, I am still broke. Okay. I live in subsidized housing, by the way, I should mention that. Uh, and I have everything that happened in my past to my, to the dark time, I ended up making bad, uh, financial choices. So I'm very much in debt and I have no on hand cash. So I just want to let you guys know that you can do this journey. Do what you want with not any with no money. You don't have to have a lot of money to do this. I just want to let you guys know about that because the next thing I'm going to say is that I cleaned out. I live in a studio apartment, by the way, so that's why I mentioned that because when I cleaned out my three shelves I can put stuff in. I made sure I cleaned out anything that had excess carbs, sugars, processed foods. I threw it all in the garbage. That was the like, first step that I did. Is if it's not in my sight, I won't eat it. Or basically, if it's not in my sight, I won't think about it. Does that make sense? And then I then I won't eat it. And then, um, so that was the first thing I did. If that was answered your question, I went ahead and just put everything in the garbage, and try to take that leap towards that that new diet. Um, now, do you want to go into? If you want, I can go into what that diet looks like. If you want, sure. Yeah, so what that diet pretty much is, is that, so how my diet progressed 
is a very, it ranged. So, because I also learned from my father. My father was, was into Atkins. He lost all his weight using the Atkins diet. Uh, if you don't know what the Atkins diet is, it's pretty much all meat. No carbs, all meat, very little sugar. And that's what I did. I started out with the Atkins diet. That's what my father did. And it worked pretty well, actually. Uh, what I did is I ended up putting my body into a ketosis mode. And I ended up getting uh, all the excess water out of my body because I didn't eat any carbs, no sugars, nothing processed. It was all ve uh, vegetables and meat. And uh, which which I know even the Atkins diet, they don't even eat that many vegetables, but they do. Um, and I ended up losing in the first two weeks or maybe three or four weeks, but I ended up losing almost 60 to almost about 60 pounds in the first two to three weeks. And that was mostly water weight. I was a big guy, right? And I was blown up. And so as soon as I, as soon as I got rid of that sugar, I got rid of the uh, seed oils and I also got rid of um, all the inflammatory foods that you can find. I just shrunk. You can see my face kind of shrunk up a little bit. Um, and I just uh, just expelled all that extra water weight that my body was holding for years. I felt I felt so much better being in ketosis mode. And now I was only in that for about a month or two. And I ended up uh, progressing that diet into something that was actually vegan. I ended up stopping the meat. So I did, I did tell that I was, I, oh, by the way, during all this as well, I'm sorry if I'm going all over, all over the place, but dur yeah, during the, that whole time too, after the first couple of months, I ended up losing a lot of weight and I ended up going to the doctor to get blood tests because I, I, I did want to make sure that I wasn't, um, I was heading in the right direction, if that makes sense. And the right direction was correct. I was heading in the right direction. I was my, my, everything was kind of like lowering a little bit and which was good. And my brother is vegan and I have an older brother and I have a younger brother. My older brother has been vegan for a long time. He's been vegan for, I think as long as I remember. And so I, during my whole life, he would always cook vegan and I liked the food and I ended up going that route for two months. That's the time where I lost, when I got all the way down to around 320. And by the way, I was not counting my calories at this time. I was not doing any kind of macro. I was winging it. So there could have been, and there were times where I said to myself, was there a day where... I thought to myself, was there a day back in back when I was growing up, I would just a day where I just wouldn't eat. I thought about that. Is there a day where I just wouldn't eat? Not that I wanted to starve myself. I just wanted to see if I could do it. And so I did it one day. I didn't eat any food during during uh, during the first couple months of my weight loss because it was more of me testing out the waters, testing out if I can go through a half a day, then to a you know, uh, more than like a th three quarters of a day. And then, then it led to a whole day to see if I can do it. Then that's when I started going into uh, intermittent fasting and started doing that. Unfortunately, I still wasn't doing calorie counting. So there was a, t so <laughs> maybe that's why it happened so fast because I wasn't uh, counting my calories. I was fasting. I went vegan. So, uh, but I tell you during all that, I lowered my A1C from 8.9 all the way down to 5.2, which is not diabetic. So I reversed it. And I also reversed my blood pressure. The highest number I saw ever was 180 over 110. I got that all the way down to 97 over 60 or something. Okay. And I and my exercise through all this as well for the first couple months was also just walking. That's it, walking. I would just walk around my block. And I worked from home from, from this as well. So I don't think I ever mentioned that. Um, I should mention that too. So the reason that makes it easy for me to do all this as well is that I work from home. And so in 2019, I forgot to mention that I got a job at Staples Remote 
as remote uh, tech technician, which also plays into a part of all the video games I've did, and also plays into uh, as I used to I build computers and as I'm not pointing at you, you can't even see it. I don't know what I'm doing that, <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I build computers and. Uh, I know everything you can know about Windows and everything like that. So I ended up using those skills um, instead of going to school. I used those skills that I learned uh, and got a job as a technician, remote technician at home. And that could have been any better. And by the way, I got that job before COVID. And from the grace of God that my mother says that uh, I got that job, uh, luckily before COVID. So I wasn't affected by COVID Yeah. Uh, jo job-wise. Um, and I'll put it this way throughout my whole life. I always worked retail, right. And worked food and I worked long hours. Uh, I'll put it this way at the pizza shop. I was a general manager at the pizza shop making just under $50,000. And, uh, I worked long, long hours there. And the reason why I brought that up is because, uh, I just didn't know if, where that would lead me to because there was nothing up higher than the drill manager because the person owned it didn't really want me to, or didn't really have, uh, basically he moved on and he sold the business without telling me. I ended up, uh, yeah, getting a job at Staples and uh, through a remote job. And I can actually cook my food at home, control everything I eat at home. I wasn't leaving the house that often. So I wasn't getting, I also had an addiction to fast food. I don't know if you want to get into that. I had an addiction into fast food. Um, there were times where many times, probably thousands of times where I would get fast food and I shouldn't have eaten the fast food. Um, and so I have, I had a horrible addiction to that. And so the, not being exposed to that by being inside of my apartment um, and cooking all my food at my house, not using anything processed. Basically I put myself in a very good position you know, no, not many excuses to not get healthy, you know, and luckily I took it upon myself to take the action and do I'm trying to think after I got down to 300, um, I still didn't do any kind of macros for maybe another four or five months, maybe, maybe three months. I didn't do any kind of macros. There's one time my friend was like, Hey, what's your macros look like? because they saw my progress, they're asking me. And, and I'm like, oh yeah, uh, it's, it's I'm on track, it's good. You know, I, I didn't have an answer for him because I wasn't doing it. And uh, maybe that might've jump-started me to doing it maybe because of the influence from him when he asked me that question. And I ended up, uh, I can't tell you exactly the, the moment that I did it, but it was right around, I wanna say last year, probably in July or August. That's when I started looking in, looking into it and learning. Um, and I didn't start actually working out until in 2022 in March. So last year in March is when I started going to the gym. Now, when I went to the gym, I want to mind everybody. I just did what it was fun. Cause that was the most important, right? When you first start out, cause you don't want to get into a habit where you are on this strict guideline to follow. And then if you miss something, you just get really depressed. No, I just went to the gym, did some random workouts and I felt good. Right. I felt like I was doing something and I was still doing my walks. I always walk. Um, you know, this is, this is the whole reason I brought up work from home is that I, I have a, a ritual that I do. I walk around during my lunch break for work. I'll walk around my, my neighborhood. I do laps around my apartment complex. And I do that every lunchtime. I don't eat lunch. I just go around there and just doing that. I did. I do that religiously. I still do that. I still do that to this day. It's 25 minutes of just 25 minutes during my day because I just sit at a desk for eight hours. Right. And uh, there's not much time for me to move. And for me to hit my now, now, since I do my calories to hit my calorie goals and everything like that, it's easier for me to do that if I'm, if I'm walking. Um, so that's the whole reason why I brought that up because I, because I work from home and it's easier to do. Uh, so, but yeah, in March is when I started working out and it's very important to know that I, I didn't have a plan. 
uh, I just worked out. I mostly just did my arms because the arms are the funnest, you know? Everybody knows, everyone wants to do arms, right? So that's what I did. I just did arms. And once I started doing and getting workout, another point I want to make too, I'm sorry, because there's another point back when I started three months after I started, I was still walking, but the three months, you know, I lost so much weight so quick, right? What do you think I lost? What do you think I lost? What kind of weight I lost? Like, uh, like either fat and muscle. What do you think? I would, I would assume it's a mix of both. I, cause if you're not lifting weights and you're not checking your protein, then you're going to lose fat and muscle. Yep. I could tell I lost so much muscle after the three months. I felt horrible. Even though my blood, my blood, uh, my, all my blood work came back fine. I just felt, I felt weak. If that makes sense. Okay. I felt bad. Uh, I did not have an, I did not just develop a disorder of like not eating. I still ate. Okay. And I still had urges to eat, but I felt like something was off with my body. And so I naturally felt this urge to do the gym. It was like a, this, you know, instinct to go. It's not like someone told me. It was more like, I, I just felt like I had to do it. You know, it felt like it was a, an eternal thing that like, you know, like a, a, uh, you know, a caveman uh, gatherer, you know, I mean, like type of, type of thing where I felt like I had to do it because I just wasn't building the muscle. And so or I was losing the muscle and I ended up going to the gym. I still wasn't taking macros and I was, I saw progress in my, in my weight gain in my arms and maybe my, my core because I was doing a lot of, uh, a lot of planks and, but I'm pretty sure everything else was losing muscle as well because I'm sure I was because, uh, I still felt good and I felt like I was getting a lot of muscle. And if you look at my Instagram, you see me doing like this a lot. It's because I've just felt the, the pride of my, of my accomplishments of, of gaining that muscle at the same time, losing the weight. But again, I still wasn't doing my macros until I want to say it could have been right before, because now, now I want to let you know, I do have a personal trainer now. He he is my uh, cousin-in-law, and for a birthday gift, he was like, he owns his own business, his own company, which I'm blessed to have that kind of, uh, you know, network for. And he said, because he could tell that I lost a lot of weight quick, okay, when I go to family outings, he, I think he was concerned. That's he was concerned to a point, well, I don't think say wrong, just concerned. I, th I think wrong, wrong was to a point. It sounds like it's more like uh, I was um, killing myself, but I wasn't killing. I, I don't think I was killing myself, but I, I know that he was like, Hey, let's get you on a plan. Just making sure like, you're uh, doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. And he basically, he's teaching me the tools of macros. Uh, be actually before. So about, a, I think about three or four weeks or a month before that, that's when I taught myself. Then he came into the picture. So it was kind of accumulation of that. So yeah, I started doing my macros and I started getting these uh, in-body scans. And I started uh, actually now for the last four months um, have been doing my in-body scans. So if you're interested in any numbers of my in-body scan, let me know. I have about four months worth uh, of any of any numbers you guys want to want to know. So if you oh, want it's to. good that you're doing that because... Um... You know, as you said, that's a, that's a, that's a common path that I see with a lot of people that lose weight. You know, they just focus on losing the weight, but they're not focused on what that weight is made up of that they're losing. And, um, you know, it's, I, whenever I tell somebody, you know, what's, you know, what's the best diet? What should I do? Keto? Should I do intermittent fasting? Should I do paleo? I'm like, dude, hit, eat the right amount of calories and hit your protein. Those are the two things you gotta worry about. Everything else is is how you get there is not as important as just eating enough protein to maintain your muscle and consuming the calories to make sure you're in a calorie deficit. As long as you hit those two things and you're lifting weights and you're doing cardio, 
You don't, honestly, you don't even have to do cardio if you consume the if you do, eat the right amount of calories. But as long as you're lifting weights to maintain the muscle, you're good. You know. Right, right. Uh, my body fat percentage, by the way, out of all this as well, I started at sixty percent. Wow. About well, actually fifty eight. 58%, but yeah, I, I rounded up to 60, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yep. And I got it down now on my own before I did any body scans. The first body scan I did, I got it down to 28% on my own, which is a big feat. So what are you at now? I am at 24%. Very cool. What's your, so looking ahead, what are your, what are your goals moving forward? But be it physical or not. I've been thinking about this, uh, now, since I lost all this weight, what do you think I have? I, I have all these extra skin. So I have a goal now to get my body percentage, mostly my body fat percentage down to where I can be approved and for to show up for con uh, consultation for a skin removal uh, because of my, you know, my man boobs. And I have a lot of, my stomach is huge. It hangs down a lot. Uh, it's, it's, Basically, I have a lot of skin. Luckily, I have no skin in my arms that are hanging. Uh, maybe because I was built it. Maybe because I did a lot of weightlifting in my arms that it just kind of like that. That can certainly it. have something to do with it. Um, it also might just be genetics in terms of like where you hold your fat. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. So one of my goal now is to get down to at least twenty percent body fat. Losing another. I still need to lose another twenty four pounds. So. Right now, I am at 217 right now. Now, with my skin, I could be 200. I don't know. The body scan, the body scan doesn't, I talked to my personal trainer, the body scan doesn't do anything about with, with extra skin. So if I take off the extra skin, I could be 200. If, if I take off another 20, 24 pounds. Yeah, and fat, what, does, what does the, what does the in-body scan quantify that weight as because obviously your skin weighs something yeah but is it counting it because i know that it, i know that it uh takes into account bones uh like organs and 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 uh fat and muscle so like yeah it's a, the skeletal muscle mass mostly and the body fat mass and the weight i think what it does what i think it's the the body mass index i think that's what it contributes to i think my personal trainer wasn't sure. Your body mass index is just your weight in in relation to your height. Okay, maybe I got to split up with something else. But anyways, the numbers are not accurate. That's what I know. So my goals are not precise, if that makes sense. So I have a goal, but I'm not too sure exactly where I'm going to end up be. Uh, but also, the whole goal of working out and gaining gaining muscle and being healthy is for when we get older... We don't have Alzheimer's and dementia, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason, and we don't we don't end up being in, a, in our on our deathbed, and by the time we're seventy, you know, that's the whole goal. So I don't have a specific end goal of where I want to be, but I do have these these little goals that to, to I want to achieve, like the like the skin removal and getting down to our at least twenty percent body fat. Then then maybe that leads to fifteen percent, and then you know, and then so forth. So. Those are the goals I am looking at now. Uh, mentally, throughout this whole journey, I feel reborn. So about my mental health, I feel like a new man. Uh, I When I talk about everything before 2021, I always say it's that was my past life. So that's how I refer to it. That's how it is. Uh, over the time as well, I also gained a dis uh, disciplines. So during this whole time as well, I was, I, I wrote down something that I really, really want to share because it's really a cool way to look at it. Because uh, this whole time, I, you know, what we talked about was doubt, right? And failure. And so the stages that I went through was, was doubt. Then I got the courage to build it up. And it, and I think uh, actually Jordan Peterson Jordan Jordan Peterson said this: it's better to live courageously than cowardly. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. And so I got the courage to start. That was that was the step. Then it then it was the consistency, right? I got the consistency to con to continue it all the way through. And then I also just started after that gaining disciplines, 
for the first time when I'm 35, I started to fold my clothes. Okay. I always lived out of garbage bags and hampers. I never put anything in drawers. Okay. If you look at my life, like, how am I alive? <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I just went through life like a mindless drone zombie until 35. How the hell did I survive? I don't, I don't know how I did it. Trust me. I you know? know I can relate to that. Not, not obviously not the physical side of it. I lost 40 pounds, which isn't, you know, I mean, I lost 57 at one point in high school, but that's, that's a good feat still. But, you know, the mental side of it and the habit side of it and the, and the how was I living the way that I was, you know, that question. You know, I often ask myself that question. I look back at photos, you know, in my camera roll from five years ago and I'm like, I don't even recognize that guy. I don't even know who that is. I look into his eyes and I'm like, who, what is going on in your head? It's like, it's like the monkey with the symbol in the TV shows where, you, you know, you look, you look inside their brain and there's just radio silence. But uh, yeah, no, it is funny looking back at your past self and being like, I don't even know how I was a person. Exactly. Like, I don't know how I survived, man. Like I had no discipline, no self-worth. So this whole journey, I'm, I, this whole journey, I'm trying to try to love myself, right? This whole journey of, of purpose, loving myself, trying to find a, a, a path, uh, a guidance, um, I, I have been experimenting with a spiritual guidance and because I feel like a new person, I feel like I'm in my character creation mode on a video game. Okay. I feel like I can, I, I can't pick a race. Okay. <laughs> but, but what I can do is I can pick, you know, if I want to be a warrior or a priest or, you know, what I mean, you know what I mean? Like in right. World of Warcraft type of thing. And I'm at this, eight, this point where I molded myself into this body I could still mold myself into whatever I want. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I, I did do a point where I started to cut you off there. I did do a point where I'm starting to, to, to refine it to now where that saying of you can do whatever you want. Now I, I, I'm trying to learn now it's, it's do what you want. You have a passion for. Okay. But if you still have that mantra, you can do what you want is great, but I'm starting to learn that, yeah, I could be a NASCAR driver, but not really. You know what I mean? Like, 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 I don't think that's really attainable at this time. Or, you know, so it's more of trying to find my passions in life. And you know my life story pretty much now, and I don't have many passions. So it's kind of hard to find what I do. And, and what I do have a passion for now is fitness and health and wellness. I do have, I do have a passion for that now. And talking to people, obviously, is a skill. I do like a passion for that. So I'm in this, I'm in this journey now of trying to inspire, uh, trying to inspire people of what I've did because I came from nothing. You know, I still have, I still kind, I have nothing. You know, the only thing I do have now is discipline. Yeah, but that, but the stuff you, but dude, the stuff that, you know, and I hear you saying these things about, you know, living in subsidized housing and being in debt and all these things, like the journey that you've gone on if you just take every single lesson that you learned over the last 16 months and apply it to something else, every single other problem in your life will take care of itself. Guarantee it. Yep. That's the, that's the exact journey I'm in at this moment. The places you can go with the lessons that you've learned and the skills that you've built over the last 16 months are you're, you're going to look back at you in a subsidized apartment right now in debt and be like, I can't believe that I was there. I, I am the epiphany of your, of your Instagram reels. Like if there's, if there's a spokesperson for, for what you're, what you speak, like I kind of achieved that within the last like year. Like it's crazy it, coming from what I, what I went through to now, um, man, it, it's, I get emotional about it. You know, I don't want to cry, but it's, it's, it is, it's like, I, I am a new person. It, I don't know how I did it. Well, I kind of do how to do it, but it's, it's, I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a, I do know it's a, it, it's, it's a, it's a built up and it, I ended up building up to the right path and I'm so happy I did that. Um, Nobody can take it from you either. Right. You know, you can get fancy cars, you can get spouses, you can get, you know, whatever, like those things can be taken from you, but the, the skills 
and the habits and the, the lessons that you've learned over the past 16 months, nobody can take that from you. And you have the power to apply that in any way that you want to, you know, and I'm telling you that though that that can carry you wherever you want to go. You know, I've seen, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in my own life. I've seen it happen in other people's lives where they go on a journey similar to yours, similar to mine or someone else's. And, um, and they take, they, they just take everything that they learned and they focus it on something else. And, and they realize that all of the tools that get you success in fitness, in business, in, you know, mental toughness, whatever you want to call it, like the foundation that rests at the bottom of each of those things is the same, you know, and whatever mountain you want to climb, you, you, you now have the tools. You just have to find the mountain for you. Exactly. Exactly. And maybe it's something, a good point too, if, if any, any viewers watching that it's asking about what would happen or what did it feel like from being 455 to being 217 now? Uh, I thought I'd maybe mention this because now my relationships are better. My friendships are better. My at work, I got a promotion because of my fitness and my wellness. I end at work. I ended up creating a plan for fitness. I ended up at my work. There is no plan uh, because I work for a corporate or not corporate. They're privately owned, but it's pretty much corporate. And they uh, don't have anything about at home wellness. And they have a whole division of people at home. So you're, I'm like, you're telling me you don't have anything planned or anything that's on your agenda about in-home fitness or in-home wellness, and you just want people just to kind of wing it? Like, you're giving these people this, in, this information about things you do in the store, and they're not in the store. They're at home. There's all these specific things you can tell these your employees that can help and better their lives for they can make you more money. Like, don't you want to have something like that? So I designed a plan at work, and because of this, I – Again, manifested it in my head, and I thought about it all the time. I put it into work. I ended up uh, putting up a whole plan in there and ended up getting a promotion out of it. Well, not promotion out of that, but it, it helped me launch me into that promotion. So not only did I fix my body, I'm also fixing work. I'm also fixing my career. Well, job. So I don't call this a career yet. Um, but I also fixed my job and got a promotion out to make more money. You know, you start to add it into other things in your life, like you said, and I'm doing that firsthand. Like it, it's something that I'm seeing, I'm learning. Um, I'm, I learn things every day still. So it's not something I, I'm not perfect at all whatsoever. And it's, a, it's, this journey has been great, but I also wanted to bring up what it feels like from being 455 down to 217. So my relationships are better, works better. Everything is better. I feel like I can, my insecurities are still there a little bit, a little bit. My insecurities are still there. And, but my confidence is like through the roof. So now when I walk into a grocery store, I don't, the first thing I don't think about is what are they going to say? Yeah. Who's staring at me? Yep. I feel like I'm a regular guy in the world now. I'm not like, I'm not a burden on society, if that makes sense. That's kind of harsh. It's harsh to say, but it's, it's the reality. You know what I mean? Like, I went on a plane for the first time. Hey, I went on vacation about like three, four weeks ago. Went on a plane for the first time. I didn't have to ask for a, you know, the seatbelt. I didn't have to ask for the seatbelt extender. You know, just like Bish did uh, in your last podcast. Yep. I went through the same thing. I would ask the, the, I would ask the attendant to get the seatbelt. Same, same scenario, same thing. And that feeling of being on a plane with my son and not having to worry about what other people thought about me is the greatest feeling in the world. If, if anybody out there has that insecurity where you go on a plane or any kind of anything in life and, and, and the first thing you think of is, oh my God, what are they going to say about me? What, you know, I look, how do I look? Like, 
are my are my same for me are my boobs sticking out <laughs> you know what i mean like 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 i that it, once you get in this journey and you lose the weight or if you lose and, and, if, and any insecurity you have and you lose it and you start to feel like you're awakened or, or, or awoke it is the greatest feeling in the world i i haven't felt that feeling in so long i'm sure i'll have other emotions and feelings later on in life but right now that 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 takes the cake that takes the cake right there like being on the plane with my son not having to worry and i just focus on him and his journey as well he's only seven and focusing on him and i don't have to worry about me i'm not in this dark place anymore like everything is so much better like i can you know you, you know what i mean like no, i think you, yeah, have a, I know you, you have a son right yeah it's just uh it's unbelievable like I just wish everybody can experience this. It's that is something that I've you know, said so many times, you know, and it's not even just about the physical side of it, losing weight. It's just like seeing the result of following through on something that you intended to do, seeing the result of discipline, seeing the result of consistency, seeing the result of making a positive change and actually sticking to that. Like, I wish that most people could experience that. And they can. They can't. Like, the reality is, is they can't experience that. But often they choose not to. I want to get into this real quick, if that's okay. Media, social aspects, everything puts you down. Okay? Everything is in this negative mindset. The news. Everything is in this negative mindset to make you worry about other people's problems instead of worrying about your own. It's just a distraction. It's all just distractions. You know, all, all of the stuff that happens in the world, like the reality is like, you can't affect any of it today. You can, you can affect, you can only affect what happens in your life, you know, and what, in the conversations you're having at your dinner table and the, the habits that you have, you know, that's all you can affect right now. Can you affect it in the future? Maybe, you know, can you affect it 10, 20 years down the road? Maybe. You know, like that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I, that's what my mission is, right? Like I'm trying to affect the way society works 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And the reason I talk about self-improvement is not because I am super, like I am into self-improvement, sure. But it is, it is because, it is because self-improvement is the foundation to building a person and building a person, we need to build people. You know, we don't need to, if you want to, we don't have to go super deep into this, but like you touched, you touched upon it. Like if you want to fix, if you want to fix society, if you want to, you know, change the way the ship is headed, uh, we're in the United States. So in the United States, you're not going to do that with a vote. You're just not, you know, one person's not coming to save the world. We have to build us. We have to build us and then we build our kids and then those kids build their kids and uh, that's how we actually do it. And uh, just just th it, just ahead. think if every if just think if everybody did that, what what would what would what would what would life be like? What would the country be like if everybody did that? That's what just it, think that's about. What it. Think, it was like. That's yeah. what it used to be like because yeah. because there was no other choice. You know the the natural yeah. world was too harsh, and we had to be the type of people that could that could survive in it. Uh, but we don't live in that world anymore. So you can be a lot less than our ancestors were in order to survive in this world. You really don't even have to be a real person. As you described, you know, five years ago or whatever it was when you were wondering how, you know, how would, how did I even survive? It's like, that's the type of thing. Like you could have survived because there, there's infrastructure in place that allows people like who you used to be, or who I used to be to function yeah. in society, you know, but a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, they would have literally died. There's no, there's no room for them in that type of world. And I'm not saying we should go back to that world, but we should build the type of people that could have survived in that world, in this world today. And that's how we fix it. The weak, in our world now, I guess, I guess the weak survive. Exactly. And the strong, get, and the strong know. get torn down. The strong get, yes. get, the strong get stories written about them. They get canceled. That's what happens to the strong. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the that's the barrier you have to cross, right? You have to get through. And I tell you, it's a hard thing to punch through. But once you get through it, I, I even for my mind, I think it punched through it. Because uh, I haven't made any impact on the world, really. That's uh, not hopefully true. I can inspire. Well, hopefully I can inspire. And uh, in the future, 
in the future make an impact, but uh, but I have to go through myself and fix myself before I can make an impact and change other Correct. people's lives. You you just can't change other people's lives. I, I was right right, right before lead, that. You have to lead from the front. You have to show them what it looks like. And, um, exactly. and you've done that. And I think that the impact that you're going to have on the world, this is going to be massive, both because of what we talked about earlier in terms of, you know, the trajectory of your son's life, how that's going to affect the people around him and what the alternative could have been yeah. but also directly from you, because we're making this podcast right now. You're going to go on other podcasts. You're going to meet other people like me Hoping. and you're going to show them you're going to show them and the millions of other morbidly obese human beings in the United States that it doesn't have to be like that. Exactly. I, I'm just really grateful to have this opportunity, by the way. So absolutely. No, when I, when I see, when I see someone like you, I want to talk to them because, you know, anybody that can, that can win the war with themselves has my respect. And so I appreciate your time. Oh, thank you very much. And I'm just happy. I made that message on Instagram on your one of your stories. And, uh, and yeah, I'm just really glad to, to, to share my story today. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll speak more in the, uh, in the locker room and whatnot. And, um, where can people find you on, on social media? Uh, basically any social media is moose mentality. Very easy and simple. Uh, just follow me on there and, uh, yeah, hit me up. I, I, I usually do about a couple of videos a day and, I always basically it's not just reels and videos. I actually tell about uh, what I'm going through and I do everyday life stuff, too. Like I, I talk about different scenarios that happens in my life. And I and you also see my progress from being 217 and so forth. You'll see my progress on there. Awesome, man. Well, again, I appreciate you coming on and uh, go follow him and follow his journey and listen to what he has to say. If you are that person that's very overweight that needs to make a change, yes. let him be the guy that that started that for you because if he can do it, you can do it. Yep. Please reach out to me. Thank you.